We had three different kinds of vodkas. That was our breakfast. Strong? Yeah. As it should be. Sure. Food like film is performance. When you walk on stage or when you walk in front of the camera, you, you really want to be spontaneous. It's not unlike this. Both are dramatic. Ooh. Whoa! Look at that. Romantic. She loved what she did so much. I would almost feel like I wanted to cry. Spectacular. Look at the fish. It looks really fantastic. It's so pretty. Or sad. I, I don't know what I was, but it was pathetic. <laughs> My guest today, Stanley Tucci. We laugh, we cry, we cook. It's all on the table. Hi, how are you, Stanley? Good. How are you? Good. Glad to see you. you. Uh -huh. I went shopping. Yeah, I see that. I was going to just do like takeout food, but I decided that we would cook together. I'm very happy uh, we're going to cook together. I have never seen Stanley in real life. I know him through his movies. However, he's playing a role in those movies. He's not the real Stanley. And I didn't know if he knows how to cook, actually, or not. Well, I was very nervous. And I thought he was very nice and obviously incredibly accomplished. So I thought, okay, let's see if we can do this. We have some tomatoes. Some little cherry tomatoes. And we have... What is that? I made chicken stock. You made yes, it at home? I did, no. But you could. And then we have this great rice. In my mind, rice means risotto when an Italian man brings uh, vialone nano, the special rice to make the greatest risottos. So we have herbs. Yeah, oh, some really, fresh um, parsley. Some and thyme, rosemary. We're going to make a, a, a lemon risotto. Ah, and we're going to make yeah. a nice whole bronzino. Which is beautiful. This is really ambitious. It's going to be a challenge if he doesn't know how to cook really well. Hopefully he does. So we have lemon. For the fish and the risotto. And the risotto. And what? Oh, yes. Parmesan for the risotto. Yes, for the risotto. Shallots and garlic. Yep. Wow, we're ready to cook. We are. Excellent. I am actually your sous chef today. Yes, I know, and it's something that I've wanted for years. <laughs> when I'm cooking at home, I always say, where's Eric? Why isn't he here helping me? But uh, you cook in your house. Cook for the family every night. I think you come from an Italian family. Yeah, food was everything. And when you sat down at the table, which we did every single night, uh, it was a real gift. I came from the same kind of family. They were French, right. and they were obsessed with food as well. As a young, young kid, I was always in the kitchen, not to help, but to eat. But to eat. <laughs> and, and we were eating all day, all the time, yes. And that was the inspiration for you to... To become a chef? Did. Yeah. I was a bad student, so when I was 15, they said, you cannot go to high school. Oh, really? And I was delighted because I, I thought, I'm going to culinary school. So you did, did pretty well for yourself, didn't you? <laughs> and you decided to become an actor. I did. I always wanted to be an actor since I was young. I've been doing it for 30 years now. 30 years. Huh? Yes, and now I'm ready to cook all the time. That's all I want to do. I yeah. heard that you like good martinis. I do. I have never tried martinis, and I never made a martini. So you're really going to teach me. I am really going to teach you, yes. Excellent, okay. we go. We decided early on the morning to make martinis. We had three different kinds of vodkas, and we tasted each of them. Uh, that was our breakfast. I have yes. never tasted a martini in my life. Really? Well, it's not like I don't drink. Yes, I've heard that, but yes. No, no. <laughs> I'll show you how to make what I think sure. is uh, a proper martini. The martini has changed over generations and generations. It used to be a lot of vermouth. You were a bartender at one point. I was a bartender when I was a kid, yeah. As a kid? Yeah. Well, years ago, you could, you could be a bartender when you were 18 years old. You can't do that anymore. It was a great experience. Okay, so to do this, yeah. I'll just show you. We're just gonna put a drop a of drop. vermouth. That's it? Okay, that's it. All right, and now I'm gonna make two, two different kinds of martinis. One is with vermouth and the other is with scotch. During World War II in London, uh, vermouth was not available. They yeah, substituted I scotch. I happen to like it with scotch. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then we're just gonna stir, stir it up. You never shake it. The purists don't shake. Okay. James Bond shook though, didn't he? Was he a purist? Depends no. on which Bond it was, I guess. Coming from a family that was obsessed with food, were you tempted to become a chef at one point or? No, I didn't really know that I was obsessed with food until much later. Uh, until I was really in my probably late 20s, early 30s. And, and I was already working as an actor. I, as I started to write Big Night, I co-wrote it with my cousin Joe. We started to talk more and more about food and I started to go to restaurants more and more. I could actually afford to go to restaurants for the first time, you know, yes. before I was making that film. And I became obsessed. And then I really asked my mom to, to teach me. And I asked my friend Johnny Scapine, French trained Italian chef. Uh, he, he showed me quite a bit. 
and he was the food consultant on the on the film. That was a very personal experience for you. I mean, you co-wrote, yeah, co-wrote, co-directed, co yeah, produce, yeah, and you act, yeah. And on top of yeah. it, you're not the chef. You're right. Yes, right, right, right. It was, it was a very interesting experience. It was um, one of those iconic movies yeah. that you remember forever, and one of the most powerful movies about food. It sort of comes because I was trained in the theater originally, using the screen as a proscenium, like a stage. Like you're going to move your characters within that space uh, in the same way that you're going to direct them when you're, when you're doing a play. Yes. And then it's really just a matter of rehearsing the scenes and getting the timing, and then figuring out what shot you want, and then having the actors really, in essence, create their close-ups, and using close-ups then judiciously. The audience doesn't necessarily know how many edits there are in a film, if a film and is well constructed. They, they shouldn't know. I mean, the last shot of Big Night is five and a half minutes long. And it's just well, a guy making a it. The omelette, and it's you who's making it. Well, I know how to make a frittata. But that was an omelette. You didn't fold it. Yes, you did. I did? Ah, you have to look at the movie again. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's what impressed me, the fact that you folded it and it was perfect. Oh my God, maybe I did. Yeah, no, you did, I'm telling oh, you. No, I had no idea <laughs> I knew how to make an omelette. I'm completely <laughs> drunk, why would I remember that? So you add a little bit of Noyi Prat in this one, uh -huh. and the other one will have a little bit of scotch. It's basically pure vodka. That's a martini. You want to put a little bit of this in. Are you using olive or, or a twist? I actually prefer a twist, because I think it's a cleaner taste. Now, taste okay, that. Let's, let's with the scotch. I like with the scotch. Yeah, it's warmer, it has more depth to it. I like a, a little bit of the smokiness of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, me um, too. This is really good, but it's strong. It's strong? Yeah. Yes, it should be. Cheers. Well, cheers. So we start the risotto. Put a little drop of olive oil in here, right? Okay. More than a drop, I think. Yeah, that's good, yeah. It's so I'm putting the shallots in a pan. This is a, this is a good amount. And give it a stir, and we just want to cook those down a so little for, bit. So for you, cooking is what? It's pleasure? There's satisfaction in cooking alone. There's also great satisfaction in cooking with somebody else. Because sometimes cooking alone is is really kind of a wonderful, therapeutic, relaxing time. And then you get to present it to the people that you love. But cooking with somebody can be really, really, really fun if they like to cook as much as you do. You can give me the best food on earth if I'm by myself. It's meant to be shared. I mean, you're not going to hide the bottle of wine and then, I mean, right. you're an alcoholic if you do right. that. And then <laughs> and you take the fish and you put it somewhere and you hide it in a corner. Right, no. Uh, it, it could be a Something good character for a movie. But it's a sad character. It's a sad character, a sad exactly, character. yes. Wouldn't you like to quit your job and live the life you've always dreamed of? You're really living the dream, I would imagine, the expat dream. I feel more free here than I do in the States. This is it, man. Yeah. This yeah. is the life. Join me, Savannah Jane Buffett, as I follow Jameson Whitbeck, a native of Vermont who dreamt of building wooden boats and after college did just that. It wasn't long before he moved his wife and kids down to the Virgin Islands to become a charter captain of his very own handcrafted catamaran. The first time we moved, we had, I mean, no money in the account. One, two, three. I think there's advantages and disadvantages wherever you are. It's just a trade-off, and you choose which ones you want to live with. So this is what it's all about, right? You get to take your kids down to the beach? Absolutely. Congratulations on making your life worth living. Yes.